Hi everyone and welcome back for another UE4 tutorial uh, in our equipment series. Now first things first I want to apologize for the absence of time between episodes in this series. Um, that was totally down to me not being too sure where I wanted to go with this series. I wasn't too happy with what I had done previously. Um, and I was in two minds whether to restart it or just to carry on and try and fix things on the go. So I've opted to go for the latter and try and fix things on the go as we carry on with it. So I just want to apologise in getting the rest of these videos out to you, but hopefully be wrapping up this series um, in due time. With that said, uh, we're going to move on to this episode, and in this episode we're going to carry on where we left off, and we're going to um, make it so that when we click on an item in our inventory, uh, in, in our capture sheet inventory, we can equip that item. Now, the equipment phase happens, there's quite a few things to it, uh, we're just working on the back end things in this episode, so we're looking at behind the scenes, and looking at what the game's actually doing to equip items to the player. After that, in the uh, next episode after that, we're going to be looking at how we can visually show that to the player that something's been equipped. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to fix one little thing, and that is in our slot inventory content. I open this up, and this is where we have our name of our item appear in our inventory. So what I'm going to do is my border, in my hierarchy here, I'm just going to right click and wrap that with a button. Now the reason why I want a button is because I want to make it so I can click on it to do something. And adding a button is the easiest way of doing that. I want mine to be invisible though, so it doesn't look like a button. So on the right hand side, in the appearance, you'll see background colour. Expand open and you'll see RGBA. We want to change the A, which is alpha, to zero. And now it's invisible. Click on pile, and we'll be returning to this after. So you want to find your way to your inventory component for your equipment and here we've got the add to inventory that we set up to test our uh, game uh, inventory show, uh, inventory being displayed what we're doing here is two things first of all is adding a variable which stores the equipped item data and then a, a function which allows the equipment of said items so on my variables here I'm going to click new variable and I'm going to go equipped armor and I'm going to change that to a uh, armor type enum so this is that enum enumerator that we made uh, a while back we just want to set it to that and what I'm going to do is click on the little pill here and change it to a map so it's bottom one in the four here and what a map is it's basically a links two variables together so here i've got in the enumerator linked to an integer so what i'm going to do is change my integer here to armor data and when i compile it in my default value i can click on the add element and here you can see head and if i expand head open you can see the details i would set for my armor now I want to add more elements to this, so I want to set all my slots up. But if I click on the add element, I'll get an error saying I cannot add another key while the default value exists. That's because the default value is head, and you can only have one of each uh, of the first index, uh, first types. So this here is unique, okay? So it's tied to whatever you want over here. So the easy way of doing that is to do the last one first, then add another one, and we can change that to legs then hands chest shoulders and then head and there's all our slots for our various pieces of armor it doesn't matter which order they're in as long as they're there so with that in line we can go to our functions and click on add function and i'm going to call this one equip armor this function here is going to allow us to add armor to this map that we just made. So what I'm going to do is my inputs over here, click on new input, and I'm going to go into my armor slot. That's one parameter. And that will be of the armor type enumerator. And then another pr uh, input parameter for the actual armor that we're actually adding to it, which is of course the armor data type. 
So this is how maps work. So if I drag this map out here and choose get, from here I can do various different functions. If I go to my utilities and then expand open map, here are the functions related to maps. Now remember the first uh, what we call the key, the first uh, variable here is called we call key. This is unique. Okay, so if I click on add, I can add a value to this map. Now, if I drag all these up like so, this add, what this means is if this armor slot key already exists, it will overwrite it with this armor data here. If it doesn't exist in this map already, it's going to add it to that map. Okay, and that is literally all we're doing to equip the armor. And what will happen is it will, all your equipped uh, slots will be stored in this variable here. So actually, the actual act of equipping, we go back to that slot inventory content that we started off with. Go to your button and scroll down to find the on clicked event click this and we want to add this to the inventory so uh, add this to the equipped uh, slot variable that we made earlier so we want to get the player character and then cast to that player character like so and from there we can access the inventory component and if you're fortunate enough you'll see the equip armor appears straight away if not get the inventory component like so and then you can access the equip armor function and there's the function we just made on that inventory component so we have to cast to it because our get player character returns a generic character reference. This will get the specific actor. This will get the inventory component of the actor. And then this will access the function of that component. Now the armor slot and the armor come from this armor piece already associated to this slot. So drag your armor piece into armor and then drag it out again and right click and choose split. And one of the uh, pins is the armor type. We can plug that straight into there, and that will do. Click compile, and we've equipped that piece of armor. So what I want to do is just double check to see if this is actually working. Now, we haven't done anything graphically yet. That will be in the next episode. Um, but what we will do is we'll do a simple print string to see that it's actually working. So on my inventory component, after we equipped armor here, I'm going to do my equipped armor map out again and I want to find the slot for head because that's what we're adding and from there I can split my pin here to get the name of it so I can do a print string with this name so now when I click on the slot it should print string the name of that slot in our game and there it appears never hell now it doesn't look that much because it's just showing the print string but what it's actually doing is adding it to our equip slot and with that in mind we can then change things graphically so we can see it appear in a thumbnail here and change the stats on that character down here that's where that will do for this episode. If you want to see the next episode straight away, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady, just like all these wonderful people have as well. So thank you very much to everyone who's been supporting me. And again, I apologize for the long wait for this episode and the rest of them for this series. If you like this type of content and you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.